Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome back to the second session. Okay. Guys had a good break. Cool. Um, so let's just uh, let's let's resume from where we left off. And uh, if it's okay with you, I want to reiterate the eight points we covered in the last session. Okay, uh, very quickly. Right? Point one is uh, why miracles, healing, and deliverance. So the biblical reasons, uh, because it reveals the reality and the nature of God. It reveals His greatness. It shows that He is compassionate. Um, it it shows what the importance Jesus gave. To miracles in his ministry he talks about the kingdom of God is the kingdom of power right that uh, that breaks that brings deliverance breaks bondages heals the sick cleanses the lepers etc raises the dead right it's his the kingdom of God is the kingdom with power right and the gospel is to be preached with accompanying signs and wonders and miracles encourages people to believe for more of the supernatural Right. So those were the eight points that we covered in the last class. And um, and, and so let's, let's continue. Well, I want to just uh, you know, very briefly mention about these two points that, that uh, one of the key points that I mentioned earlier in the beginning is every believer can do this. Right? We are expected to do this. And Jesus, Jesus expected us to do his, to live like him. Right, um, so that's one. Of, that was one of the key points that I mentioned when we started off, isn't it? And so, uh, you look at. Let's go to page twenty-three, the very bottom. Page twenty-three. It says in your notes, it says God desire God's desire, the supernatural through every believer. Right. Once again, reading from John chapter fourteen, verse twelve. Most assuredly, I say to you. He who believes in me, the works that I do, he will also do. And greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. Because I go to my Father. Um, right? the, is, that, that, that verse is just filled with so much uh, of goodness. We can talk about it all day. Um, right. So in, in short, coming back to that point, is that he desires all of us. Uh, to work and move in the supernatural, right? Uh, now, how can we do that? Uh, you know, in, in, in page 25, uh, right on top, you see that Holy Spirit power given is given to all believers. And B, sonship glory is given to all believers. Right? Sonship glory is given to all believers. Now, um, when you study some, uh, you study about the humanity of Jesus Christ in the subject of Christology. Okay, uh, Selena Mam is teaching that, and um, so one of the things that you will study is about the humanity of Jesus Christ. Okay, uh, when he came down to earth, he was all God, all man, right? But then he was because of his because of the limitations of being in a human body, uh, he who was omnipresent. Uh, could not be omnipresent, right? And there's so many things. He was sleepy. He slept. He was hungry. He ate, right? He was tired. He would he would get weary. So all of the those points to the towards the humanity of Jesus, right? In Philippians chapter two verse seven, it says he made himself of no reputation. Right? Philippians chapter two verse seven. That's mentioned in your in the, in the notes in the book page twenty five actually. Uh, Right, uh, when Jesus walked the earth, he was all God and all man, deity and humanity met together. He was deity in origin and identity. However, he laid aside the powers of the deity, the eternal glory of omnipresence, omniscience, omnipotence, and these could not be contained in a flesh and blood human body. Okay, and and hence, it's mentioned in Philippians 2, 7, made himself of no reputation, um, which is a Greek word, simply means kino, uh, means to empty one's self. So in short, everything that Jesus did, he did it with these two things. One, he was filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Two, with the sonship glory, which was, which was bestowed on him. 
right? In at the bottom of page 25, we see in Luke chapter 4, verse 18, 19, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. Okay, he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Okay, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery for the sight, recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Okay, you see the progression. Now, this is of course being uh, is a prophecy being quoted from Isaiah right, that Jesus is quoting. Um, see the progression of that verse. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach. Okay, uh, and one of the points that we uh, did and covered in the last session is that the preaching of the gospel should be accompanied by signs and wonders and so of supernatural ministry. And that's exactly what is happening here in this verse. Um, in in page twenty six, we see that Acts chapter ten verse thirty eight. Acts chapter ten verse thirty eight. It says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. Okay? He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. Right? So Jesus was, Jesus did everything he did with the power of the Holy Spirit that was on him. And then finally, we see in Acts chapter 1, verse 5 and 8. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Verse 8 says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You shall be witness to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Right? Um, so the baptism... Baptism of the Holy Spirit is still available for us today. It has not ended. Uh, it, is, it is through the power of the Holy Spirit that we can do what Jesus did. And secondly, and through the sonship glory given to all believers. Right? Um, page 26 at the bottom, it says in John chapter 1, verse 14 says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the one of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Another key scripture in, uh, in John chapter 17, verse 522, very important. Uh, in page 27, it says, And now, O Father, glorify me together with yourself. Okay, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. And the glory which you gave me, I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one. Amazing, isn't it? John chapter 17 is, uh, is a very pivotal chapter in the Gospel of John, actually, in the whole New Testament, right? It's Jesus interceding for us, for you and me, right? Um, it's, it's about amazing how, G how Jesus is saying, okay, now glorify me, the, the glory that I had with you before the world began. And then, and the glory which you gave me, I have given them. Okay, just check out the authority and the power that Jesus has, okay? The, the glory that you gave me, I am giving to them. Just as you and I are one, let, so they can also be one, right? So with these two things, right? Holy Spirit is made available for all of us because of what Jesus did on the cross, right? Uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we, uh, we emphasize that uh, in our church. Uh, we have sessions on the baptism of the Holy Spirit and by right, teaching on the importance of it, right? Um, so baptism of the Holy Spirit, and the sonship glory. And because of these two things that is made available for you and me, we can do what Jesus did. Okay, what are the two things, guys? The Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit is made available for you. That's one. And secondly, your identity as a sons and daughter of the Most High God. Amen? Yep, cool. Okay, I hope you guys are with me. Um, so let's just uh, continue, right? As we as we go forward, um, you know, we're going to ask address some of the important questions, 
right, one of the key important questions that we're going to just talk about from page 28 onwards uh, is this, why are we not demonstrating more of God's power? Okay, why, why is every church that's ever being planted is moving in the supernatural? What are, what are some of the reasons, right? Um, Bill Johnson says this the best. He says, Bible study without Bible experience is waste. <laughs> that's stayed with me for, uh, it's still, I don't know for how long it's going to stay with me. Okay, Bible study without Bible experience is, it's, yeah, it's, it's a waste. Yeah, yeah, that's what he says. So anyways, so let's let's uh, address uh, some, you know, this question. Why are we not demonstrating more of God's power? Okay, the first point uh, is lack of knowledge. Okay, lack of knowledge. Um, Isaiah chapter 13 um, says, Therefore my people have gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. And Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Okay, uh, knowledge comes with teaching. So, probably there is not enough teaching or emphasis uh, being made available or, you know, resources being made available, or, you know, on who this God is. I remember the very first point was the ministry of supernatural and deliverance is it unveils who God is, right? And with that revelation, with that unveiling comes a knowledge of who God is, right? We get to know the nature of God. And uh, in, without seems like without the teaching or enough emphasis on those topic on this topic um, there is no knowledge so this is one of the things that uh, hinders us or stops us from moving in the power of God first one is the lack of knowledge second is wrong teaching concerning the supernatural okay wrong teaching concerning the supernatural right um, in page 29 uh, there's a scripture that's mentioned from mark chapter 7 verse 8, 9, and 13, right? In page 29, there's a scripture that's mentioned there. Mark chapter 7, verse 8, 9, and 13. I'll read it for us. It says, For laying aside the commandment of God, you hold the tradition of men. Okay, the washing of pitchers and cups and many other such things you do. He said to them, All too well you reject the commandment of God that you, that, that you may keep your tradition." You reject the commandment of God that you may keep your tradition, making the word of God of no effect through your tradition, which you have handed down, and many such things you do. Okay, uh, it seems like uh, tradition, we give more importance to the tradition that's been passed on from generation to generation, and, um, and hence that has led to false teaching or wrong teaching regarding the supernatural right some of the claims or teaching that's going around is uh it's the, the three points that's mentioned there is it was only for bible times right? it is not for us today right succession that, that's what we're talking about right in those days they did not have medical help as we have as we do today and hence they needed supernatural power of god to help right um you, you get what i'm talking about right this whole thing ended when the last apostle died uh, you know, that's the idea of the teaching of secession, isn't it? Uh, can you imagine, uh, you know, Paul, uh, sorry, John, uh, was the last apostle, known apostle to die uh, on his last days. Everybody know, okay, he's, he's sick, he's going to die. All right, guys, just line up in front of his house. Okay, he's going to die because once he dies, the supernatural and the healing power of God is not going to work anymore. Right? Uh, that's, but that's not true, isn't it? Um, Right, that's what that's again the wrong teaching. Uh, right. I recently, uh, there was, uh, I think Pastor Nancy, she'd, uh, and the sermon is available on our website, it's uh, the same Jesus who lived, uh, right? Um, and the same Jesus who did everything that he did can do the same things today. And that's why we have the scripture in the Hebrews. Right? He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. The same Jesus who healed the sick back in his days, when, uh, in his time on earth, 
It's the same Jesus who is still healing the sick, right? Uh, opening the eyes of the blind, uh, you know, healing the mute, healing the deaf, etc., uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera, right? Jesus has not changed, right? If this is what Jesus did in his time on earth, this is what he wants to do, and he's doing right now. Okay, so that's the second, uh, you know, reason why we are not moving. Uh, we are not demonstrating more of God's power. When I say we, uh, it's the church in general, the global church. It's not pointing any particular church or any denomination as such. When we say church, it's a universal church, right? Um, so that's the second point. And the third one is being leaving the miracle ministry reserved for an elite few. Okay, um, we still have to drive that point which says every believer can do this. Uh, and somehow we seem to have an idea. Uh, again, it comes with the teaching or I don't know what understanding is that, okay, it's it's only for the healing ministry of so-and-so or the miracle ministry of so-and-so and, and whatnot. Um, and sure, you know, as, as in, in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, you know, it is true that the Lord Jesus has appointed some people to be evangelists in the body of Christ, who are, you know, who are workers of miracles with gifts of healings, etc. Um, yeah, I'm in page 30, by the way. So while we recognize those called to be healing evangelists and others in the fivefold ministry, ministry gift in the body of Christ, we also understand that God intended for all believers to pray, heal the sick and cast out devils by the authority of Jesus' name. Right? That is a commandment, isn't it? Uh, it's, I think it's very convenient for us to obey or be a selective followers of selective commands right uh, okay i will choose to obey this command i will not choose to obey that command um, right one of the points that uh, it kind of stood out to me is in ephesians chapter 5 uh, where paul writes about it's a commandment he says uh, do not be drunk with wine but be filled with the spirit okay uh, the first point seems to be, you know, very clear, easy, you know, so do not be drunk with wine. Yeah, sure, sure, brother, pastor, no, I'm a Christian. I, you know, I, I don't, even during Christmas and Easter, I don't, you know, I will I don't drink wine. <laughs> but what about the second half of that commandment? Okay, but be filled with the spirit. Uh, how many of us in the church can say that I am filled with the spirit? How many of us can say that, that I have obeyed the second half of the commandment as well? Right, so we cannot be selective in 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 the choice of commandments that we want to follow and not. Right, uh, this is a commandment. Every believer can do this. Right, we are called to do this. We are commanded by Jesus, our teacher, our master, our Lord and Savior, to do this. Right, so uh, we need to drive that home. Uh, you know, saying, okay, this is not just for the elite few. It's for all of us. It's all our call to walk in the supernatural. Right. And point four, uh, replacing the supernatural with a modern substitutes. Uh, somehow, again, you know, we become content with technology or with good programs. Uh, you know, with just amazing uh, concerts with lights and and whatnot. Uh, and all of that, we do all of that at APC, right? Uh, we, where we we believe in just producing, being good, go, getting better month after month with our production, right? We depend on technology, thankful to technology because this is happening, right? Our classroom is happening. And, and we, uh, so we are thankful for that, right? We are not negating or uh, just, uh, you know, discounting that fact at all. But can we be um, uh, satisfied with that? No, right? Uh, at the bottom of this, we need to continue. We need to pursue and push uh, and place emphasis uh, on the presence of God, you know, followers of his presence, pursuers of the presence of God, which leads to the supernatural, right? That's the fourth thing. Uh, again, guys, just want to pause and reiterate the question that we are addressing, which is, why are we not demonstrating more of God's power? So everything we are discussing is connected to that question, right? Why are we not demonstrating more of God's power? 
so the points that we've covered so far is one because of lack of knowledge and wrong teachings that's out there uh, it's more dangerous because of everything is available on youtube now and then uh, we some of us believe that it's only for the elite few uh for certain ministry and whatnot and then we are satisfied with good programs let's put it that way that's point four um, and just moving on in page 31 is point five unwilling to press in till we see more of his power displayed unwilling to press in and um in matthew eleven twelve, it says from the days of john the baptist until now the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force uh very, very popular scripture, isn't it? Uh, you know, the violence shall take it by force. Uh, it's simply pointing, again, metaphorically saying that there is no enough desire. There is no enough want or pursuit. There is no intent uh, or intensity in our prayers to wanting more of God. Right? Um, are you guys with me? Okay, so that's what you know this that that point is uh, emphasizing all about is we need to be more hungry to see what jesus did in our day and age right uh, we we need what was it about uh you know peter's shadow that healed the cripple uh was it only for him was it something special about peter uh you know and that question should, that curiosity should lead you to seek him more and say, like, Father, if you move that way with Peter, I want you to use me as well. Right? It's, it's not, shouldn't, it's not about coming from a place of arrogance, saying, it's like, you know, so that all the glory can come on me, all the spotlight should fall on me. It's like, oh, Roshan's shadow is healed. Oh, Roshan is amazing. <laughs> it's about, again, going back to the heart of God, right? Uh, that he wants to see people being healed. He wants to reveal his nature. He wants to see uh, his children see him, who he really is, how good he is, right? He, that he loves them, that he wants to see them well, that he wants to see them healed. He wants to see them live life with full of peace, that is shalom. Right, um, so that's why that's why we need to intercede and press in more, desire more, hungry more, uh, be uh, you know hunger after His presence. Um, so that's the point five. Uh, it's about we need to get more hungry and desperate for His presence. Uh, and finally, uh, just uh, you know point six in page thirty one. Some of the other roadblocks to supernatural is not stepping out in faith. Not stepping out in faith. Uh, this is a popular line that, that is out there. Faith is spelled as R-I-S-K, risk, right? Uh, we, we, I mean, we are scared for a lot of reasons, and rightfully so, given the political climate in our country, it's India. <laughs> the last thing you want to do, right, it's, it seems like that, isn't it? Uh, with, at least in Karnataka, with all this anti-conversion bill going on. Um, you're like, yeah, I'm not taking that risk, <laughs> type, you know, but, um, and that's where, you know, just seeking him more comes in, okay, just being hungry for more of his presence, uh, you know, because while we pray for the spirit, for the Holy Spirit over us, we also see that the scripture says that he has given, he has not given us the spirit of timidity, right, but he's given us a spirit of power. Um, so that's one of the roadblocks is not stepping out in faith. That means just not willing to take enough risks uh, for ex various reasons, um, depending on methods instead of his presence, uh, depending on methods instead of his presence. Right. One of the key points, again, we mentioned initially is that it's not about the methods or process. This whole thing is about the person of Jesus Christ, right? Um, so, uh, um, and uh, you know, just go through some of uh, you know, the other notes that's mentioned there in page 32, um, page 31, 32. Okay, so those are the, uh, you know, six key uh, points of why we are not demonstrating more of God's power is lack of knowledge, wrong teaching, uh, not taking the initiative of believing that 
this healing ministry is only for you know the called or the chosen uh, replacing the supernatural with modern substitutes or unwilling to press in uh, not willing to step out in faith or depending on methods instead of his presence or discouragement from past failures or improper motives uh, all of these various reasons uh, can stop us from demonstrating the power of God in our lives, in your ministry, in your walk with him as a Christian, as a believer, et cetera, et cetera, right? And another question, uh, you know, that uh, can get asked is, uh, don't demonic powers also demonstrate supernatural, right? Don't the demonic power also uh, demonstrate supernatural? Um, that's another common question. So we see that in Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse nine. Second Thessalonians in page thirty-three in your notes, it says, "The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders." Right, the coming of lawless ones is according to the working of Satan, with uh, all power, signs, and lying wonders. Um, a common contention. I'm just reading some a para of from the notes. It says a common contention against us believers emphasizing healings, deliverance, signs, and wonders is the point that even demonic uh, powers through false teachers, practitioners of witchcraft, also perform supernatural signs. Yes, this is true. The Bible does talk about Satan working, lying, or deceptive signs and wonders. Right, but uh, then, I mean, the notes uh, just goes on to say that he is a counterfeit. Okay, but just because there is a counterfeit, uh, you know, one of the points that in your notes in page thirty-four it says, okay, there are a lot of, let's say, a, a lot of counterfeit thousand rupee notes out there um, that shouldn't that doesn't stop us from using the 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 genuine one, isn't it? Um, there are a lot of fake things. Uh, that, that, that's out there in the world, that, but that doesn't stop us from pursuing something that's genuine. And similarly, uh, the Satan does what he has to do, and he knows to only counterfeit. He only knows to duplicate things, uh, you know, of, um, from everything that happens in the kingdom of God. Uh, but he's powerless. That shouldn't stop us from pursuing the supernatural that God has in store for us, right? A um, couple of scriptures. Uh, it's mentioned or examples of that point is we see that uh, the story of Moses and magicians in, in, in Egypt, right? Uh, in Exodus seven, verse eight to 12, page 35, page 35. Can I request someone to read that verse, please? That scriptures, Exodus chapter seven, verse eight to 12. Exodus chapter 7, verse 8 to 12. Then the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, When Pharaoh speaks to you, saying, Show a miracle for yourselves, then you shall say to Aaron, Take your rod and cast it before Pharaoh, and let it become a serpent. So Moses and Aaron went in, went into Pharaoh, and they did so, just as the Lord commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. But Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers. So the magicians of Egypt, they also did in like manner with their enchantments. For every man threw down his rod, and they became serpents. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. Okay. All right. Thanks, Jeffina. Um, right. I mean, just put yourself in the shoes of Moses, okay? This is to be fair in all honesty. Okay. God tells him, it's like, hey, don't worry about it. Go to Pharaoh's chamber and throw your rod. It's going to become a snake and he's going to see the power of God. And what? Okay. Moses goes into the all confidence. like, all right, let's do this. Okay. We got this. And he tells his brother, he gives high five, whatever, fist pump. Okay. Um, and then he th <laughs> throws his rod down. And then the next thing you know, Pharaoh calling his magicians. Like, yeah. Okay. Who can't do this trick? And it tells them to you know, uh, do the same trick. And Moses is like, okay. You know, it must be in his heart saying, okay, God, you did not discuss this with me, <laughs> right? You, you didn't give me a heads up. What, what is happening? Um, but it, before you know it, uh, you know, again, to prove God's power, his rod 
swallows the other rods, right? A magician's. And then and we just come down to the very bottom of the notes. Uh, you see in Exodus 8, verse 18 and 19. Uh, we are in page 35 still, okay? Exodus chapter 8. It says, Now the magicians so worked with their enchantments to bring forth lice, but they could not. So there were lice on man and beast. Then the magicians said to Pharaoh, this is the finger of God. But Pharaoh's heart grew hard and he did not heed them, just as the Lord said. This is the finger of God. Right? Just because there's counterfeit and whatnot, it didn't stop God from moving through Moses. Moses was obedient. He just kept following God's commandment. And God start, God kept moving through him until the very sorcerers, okay, the witchcraft people, okay, the counterfeit magicians of Egypt could say and declare that this is the finger of God. Right? Um, we need to be uh, like that, uh, people. Is We need to walk in a way where the world, until the world points their finger and say, that's the finger of God on them, right? Uh, everything that they are doing is the hand of God, is through the hand of God, okay? Um, are you with me? Let's, let's, move, let's move to another example that's mentioned in page 37 is the ministry of Jesus. Um, page 37 is the ministry of Jesus. Jesus himself was falsely accused, <laughs> right? Uh, they said, okay, even Jesus was falsely accused for doing his work by the power of Beelzebub, the ruler of demons. Uh, so this indicates to us that even during Jesus's time, sorcerers, magicians, and practitioners of witchcraft were in the land and performed healings and miracles. However, the Lord Jesus did not change his ministry strategy and abandon his working miracles like he, he jesus did not go like like father you know we have to change our strategy now everybody are there there are a lot of magicians black magicians witchcraft people so can we come up with another game plan here no jesus continued to do what you know what he's best at uh, he was not distracted or worry about what people you know told about him he just went about doing the father's business and that is healing the sick cleansing the lepers raising the dead etc etc Okay, um, and again, there are several other instances which I, uh, we're not going to go into. So that's the those are the answers to the question, don't demonic power also demonstrate the supernatural? Well, they do. So what? That shouldn't stop us from doing what we are called to do as God's people, right? Um, and second, and, and moving on to the next point is, uh, is asking for signs wrong? We are on page 38. Uh, in the notes, is asking for signs wrong? Okay. Um, I want two people to read two scriptures that's mentioned in the notes. One is Matthew 12, 38 to 42, and the next scripture, Matthew 16, 1 to 4. I want two people to read that, please. Fast, fast, fast. Matthew 12, 38 to 42. Then some of the scribes and Pharisees answered, saying, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. But he answered and said to them, An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh will rise up in the judgment with, with this generation and condemn it because they happened at because they repented at the preaching of Jonah and indeed a greater than Jonah is here. The queen of the south will rise up in the judgment with this generation and condemn it for she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon and indeed a greater than Solomon is here. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Rosalind. Right. Uh, somebody else? The next verse, please. Matthew chapter 16, verses 1 to 4. Then the Pharisees and Sadducees came, and testing him, asked that he would show them a sign from heaven. He answered and said to them, When it is evening, you say, It will be fair weather, 
for the sky is red and in the morning it will be fall weather today for the sky is red and threatening hypocrites you know how to discern the face of the sky but you cannot discern the signs of the time a wicked adulterous generation seeks after a sign and no sign shall be given to it except the sign of the prophet jonah and he left them departed right thank you sir okay so it seems like when you know by reading these scriptures and if you read all the scriptures that's mentioned uh, until the next page page 40 uh, in the notes it seems like uh, jesus rebuked everybody who came to him who asking for sign and one of the things uh, and so if you come to page 14 in your notes please um there is a summary of all the scriptures that's mentioned in page 40 it says so there are some common elements in all these incidents where people came seeking a sign one they came testing him or with the intent of disputing or arguing with him right so jesus knew their heart his their intention is why they are coming right uh and i love this very important thing uh guys is is related to questions there's a huge difference between asking questions and questioning everything okay there's a huge difference between asking a question and questioning everything uh it all points towards the intention the motivation of your heart okay so and jesus knew that and that's why he makes uh, you know it is the point that says here is they came testing him or with the intent of disputing arguing with him uh, he called them evil and adulterous because of the heart with which they came uh, the second point is they came refusing to accept it simply means they came to him already with their minds made up have you ever had a conversation with the person <laughs> like that you know uh, who's asking a question but they have already made up their mind yes it's, it's not always pleasant isn't it anyways the point 3 there it says in all cases jesus pointed to himself his death and resurrection as the ultimate final sign that would be given to such people would be given to such people okay um So let's just read some of the things that's mentioned in the notes with me. So, so we understand that when people came seeking for a sign in order to test, argue, and challenge him, the Lord refused to do anything for them and simply pointed to his death and resurrection. The next para, however, in the rest of the Gospels, we know that multitudes came seeking for his power to touch their lives in healings, miracles, and deliverance. these people came with faith and expectation to personally experience his power at work for them to such people the lord jesus responded with great compassion and did great signs and wonders to meet their needs he did not rebuke or refuse them amen so the point uh, the answer to this point is asking for signs wrong is all come down boils down to that one point is what is the intention of your heart right what is the motivation behind it um so yeah that's the uh, answer for that question is asking for signs is asking for signs wrong um let's move on to page 42 to the next question is what about false prophets in sheep's clothing what about false prophets in sheep's clothing okay so Uh, can someone quickly read Matthew the the verse that's mentioned there Matthew seven fifteen to twenty seven, please. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly and are ravenous wolves. You will recognize them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorn thorn bushes or figs from thistles? so every healthy tree bears good fruit but the diseased tree bears bad fruit a healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit nor can a diseased tree bear good fruit every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire thus you will recognize them by their fruits all right is is that all right till yeah, 20 yeah yeah actually yeah that's fine gp um yep okay 
I hope everything's all right. <laughs> yes, sorry. <laughs> that's that's fine. That's fine. Uh, um, so the two scriptures, guys. That I, again, I would encourage you to read it. Uh, you know, separately. The other scripture mentioned there is Second Corinthians eleven twelve to fifteen, right? Uh, asking about what about false prophets in sheep's clothing, uh, and in our day and age, I'm sure there are lots right now out there, right? But however, Jesus taught us how to recognize who is genuine and who is not, right? First, he said, by their fruits, you will know them, right? By their fruits, you will know them. Second, what do they practice? Do they do the will of the Father or do they practice lawlessness? Um, and so it's very important for us to ask these questions uh, as we, you know, as we see so many, uh, you know, ministries out there, uh, you know, moving in signs and wonders, it's very important for us to gauge them by their fruits, etc. Okay. And another classic question um, that that you know that 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 can be asked in page forty four is: Isn't entering into eternal life more important than being healed or delivered? Okay, isn't entering, what, what would your answer be? <laughs> okay, isn't entering into eternal life more important than being healed or delivered? It's like, yeah, duh. Yes. <laughs> like Jesus said, you know, Jesus says, okay, if, if one of your eye causes you to sin, uh, cast that one, you know, and throw it away, it's better to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than, you know, just being thrown into, in, in, into hell. So in your notes, it says, absolutely, you know, we do not in any way dispute the importance of eternal salvation of a person, which is definitely more important than any physical or emotional need that has to be met here on earth, right? But let's just come down to the next para, way down in page 44. However, the reason we are here on earth is to see souls saved. Okay, what you want to underline that? Okay, if you can. However, the reason we are here on earth is to see souls saved, brought out of darkness, and establish God's rule and dominion in the hearts and lives of people. And so, going back, asking that question, what did Jesus do, and how did he he, he evangelize? Right by preaching the gospel. By preaching the gospel, it was accompanied with signs and wonders. Right. Otherwise, Jesus didn't have to do that. You could just directly walk, okay, okay, I'm going to the cross without doing anything. You know, because that was all was necessary for our salvation, isn't it? For you and me, there was no need for Jesus to move in the signs and wonders, right? Just think about it. Um, okay, so while it, yes, it is important, you know, that eternal salvation is important, that us getting to heaven is important, all of that. But our call is also the Great Commission is to go into the ends of the world and make disciples, preach the gospel, right? Um, and all of that points towards saving the souls, right? So it is important and it goes hand in hand, the healing of ministry and, uh, and deliverance. Um, and I want to just uh, another last last point, which is two points, which is uh, the ministry of apologetics. Uh, that's in page 46 in your notes. I want to tie that with two points. Ministry of apologetics. Um, now, ap apologetics simply means uh, the ability to reason or defend our faith, right? Ability to, uh, you know, defend or you know, reason your faith, right? And the very uh, modern uh, scripture that is used time and time again is First Peter chapter three verse fifteen. First Peter three fifteen it says. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. This is page 46. And always be ready to give a defense, apologia, to everyone who asks you for a reason, for the hope that is in you, with meekness and fear. So um, we, this scripture is only used to uh, be more equipped in the, in the field of apologetics, right? To defend your faith, to uh, how to answer questions about evolution or eternity, uh, what happens after you know someone dies, uh, you know, ethics, moral ethics, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Uh, and all all attention and importance is given to that one thing, and 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 leaving out the importance of moving in the power of God, right? 
And a beautiful defense that mentioned here in, in page 47, the same Peter who wrote 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15, here in 47, it says in Acts chapter 4, verse 13 and 14, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, Okay, think of the modern day apolog uh, apologetics uh, people like, you know, uh, Nabil Qureshi who was with us and uh, another person called David something. There's so many apologetics. All of, uh, all of them are known to be well-trained, well-equipped, highly educated. But here it says, Peter and John, who perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled and they realized that they had been with Jesus. And seeing the man who had been healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. And so what was Peter's defense? What would have been Peter's defense is this, is not just mere knowledge uh, of being able to defend, but it was accompanied with the power right, of, of, of healing and deliverance. Uh, and uh, yeah, um, I think, okay, we are off time now. I'll, I'll stop here, guys. And uh, I want to encourage you to just go back and you know, just read through some of the scriptures that we didn't read um, and should help. Okay. Um, I hope you guys are doing all right. Um, we'll catch up again next week. I don't want to make you late for your next class. Okay. See you guys. Take care. Have a lovely week. Thank you, Buster. Thank you. Take care, man.